Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So, in the last one, we have had a lot of discussion with respect to stock and data system. We will continue with that topic now. And as far as this particular topic is concerned, uh, 2.3 we are picking up to start this particular topic, not 2.1 or 2.2. First, we are picking up 2.3. Correct? So, in this particular question, just give me a bit of time. Let me delete it out. Right. So, Lakes Limited sent goods to Rutland branch at cost plus 25%. Now, in this question, the very first line is also very important. Analysis of rate. Question number 2.3. Correct. The very first line is very important. First of all, let me write here cost price plus margin is equal to invoice price. Correct. Because rate is given on cost, so I will consider cost as 100 and margin as 25. So my invoice price will be equal to 125. Normally what we have been doing so far till up to this particular point, after what we call filling up all these what we call items, we used to consider margin in the numerator and in the denominator we used to write invoice price numerator divided by invoice price and this is known as rate of loading this is known as rate of loading rate of loading on invoice price rate of loading on invoice price of course rate of loading on invoice price we generally need and most of the time we always need this particular rate in fact so far especially under section 1 we required only this particular rate the reason being is that i have already told you so many times that irrespective of the fact whether the opening rate or the rate which is given in the opening lines whether it is based on cost or on invoice price items below with respect to goods like opening stock goods sent to branch account closing stock these are always considered at invoice price correct these are always considered at invoice price so that is why we always need rate of loading on invoice price but now onwards you make a habit of not only computing rate of loading on invoice price but also sometime you may require rate of loading on cost price how to compute and how to frame rate of loading on cost price and why we would need that just pay attention this is rate of loading on invoice price i have written in the numerator margin suppose i write in the numerator margin and in the denominator instead of writing invoice price suppose i write cost price then it will be called rate of loading on cost it will be known as rate of loading on cost rate of loading on cost now onwards you have to make this habit of computing the rate not only what we call on invoice price but also on cost price the reason being is that Although most of the items below are always considered at invoice price, but sometime under rare circumstances, you may be given an item at cost price. For example, suppose if it would have been written opening stock at branch at cost price, then in that case, I would need what we call rate of profit on cost price and how I would use that rate, I will also let you know. Now, second important point is that this is first important point. Second important point is in this question it, it is given opening stock at branch at invoice price. Normally we, we are simply given opening stock, closing stock. We are never given in this banner opening stock at branch or opening stock at head at head office. Pay attention. Suppose you are given in a particular question simply opening stock, opening stock, closing stock, whatever. Suppose in the question it is given opening stock only. Below, you are given opening stock. We always presume this item to be at invoice price. Correct? Suppose we are given in this manner opening stock at invoice price 
then no doubt in this case it is at invoice price. In this case, there is no one require any mental exercise to know whether it, whether it is at cost price or invoice price, isn't it or not? In this particular case, we do not require any mental exercise, correct? However, suppose you are given in this manner, opening a stock at branch, opening a stock at branch, opening stock at branch, at invoice price, then also no problem, it will be considered at invoice price. Suppose you are given in this manner, opening stock at branch, opening stock, closing stock, whatever it might be, opening stock at branch, at cost to branch, at cost to branch. Here you may get confused. If I am going to ask you whether it is given at invoice price or at cost price, some of you may be tempted to say, sir, this time it is given at cost price. No. Even in this case, it will be considered at invoice price. Why it will be considered at cost price? Try to understand. Suppose this is the head office. Head office, let us say cost price of the goods is 100 and head office has put up a loading of 20 in it and supplies these goods to branch. Of course, head office is sending these goods to branch at the rate of 120 that is known as invoice price. However, branch will never know what is the real price of these goods because invoice has been prepared with the rate of 120. So, branch will receive these goods at the rate of 120 and from the perspective of the branch, this is cost to the branch because branch will think that this is the cost price of the goods. Head office knows that cost price of the goods is 100 and we have loaded these goods by 20. So, that is why invoice price is 120. This is known to head office. But when branch will receive these goods, branch will think that that is the cost price of the goods. That is the reason why I am telling that suppose if in the question sometime it is written opening stock at branch at cost, still it, you will consider them at invoice, at invoice price. Is it clear to you or not? This is very important. This is very important. Why it is at invoice price? Where even though it is written opening stock at branch at cost to branch. So, at cost to branch also means it is at invoice price. Correct? However, if it is given in this manner in the question, if it is given in this manner in the question, opening stock at cost. Opening stock at cost. Sometime you may be given in this manner, opening stock at cost. In that case, you will consider it at cost price. And in that case, we may need, in that case, we may need rate of loading on cost. How we will use rate of loading on cost, I will let you know. But you need to understand that sometime items below may be at cost, correct? Similarly, suppose if it is given to you, opening stock, at cost with head office. So again you will consider them at cost only. You will consider them at cost only. Correct? So sometime items below may be at cost price. So in order to tackle those items you will need rate of loading on cost. So that is why I am telling you that whenever you compute the rate of loadings, although most of the time we shall need only what we call this particular rate, but on rare circumstances we may need this particular rate also especially under second method. So after having a good look over this, now I will try to solve this particular question. First of all I told you, just allow me a second. I will prepare a branch stock account. What happened? First, let me prepare branch stock account.
This is the major account, branch stock account. I have already told you branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price, although you need not require to write at invoice price. It is always presumed that it is at invoice price, correct? Branch stock account, I think this much is enough. So one, we will prepare branch stock account. Then we will prepare branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account. In order to prepare branch adjustment account, I think this much is enough. Okay. Then we will prepare branch profit and loss account. Sir, you have told that we will also prepare what we call branch profit and loss account. Yes, you are right. We need to prepare profit and loss account and branch data account. Now I am preparing branch profit and loss account. Branch profit and loss account. Profit and loss account. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this is the problem only. Branch profit and loss account. Besides that, we also need to prepare branch debtors account. However, in this particular question which we are doing, there is no information related to opening or closing debtors. In case question is silent with respect to opening or closing debtors, in that case, you need not require to prepare branch debtors account. So that is the reason I haven't prepared branch debtors account in this question. Correct. Now we come to the point. This is your question. First of all, we have got opening stock at invoice price. It is simply written opening stock at branch at invoice price. I have already told you opening stock at branch will always be at invoice price, whether it is written opening stock at branch at cost to branch or whether it is written opening stock at branch at invoice price. That means this item is at invoice price. This is very important for you to understand. First of all, I am going to write here opening balance brought down or I, I can simply write opening stock. So I will write here opening stock, amount of opening stock given to us is actually 5000. So I will write here 5000, correct? After having written opening stock, I have already told you we will have to take the loading. And loading is done on the opposite side, but not in the same account. For the purpose of extracting the loading, I will move over to the what we call branch adjustment account to the credit side and I am going to write here loading or just it seems I have picked up pencil. So loading on opening stock and opening stock amount is 5000 rate of loading on invoice price which which we just computed is equal to 1 by 5. So I will need rate of loading on invoice price rate because this item is at invoice price. So that is equal to 1000. Correct? 1000. Then besides that we have got in this particular case next item is after opening stock we have got goods sent to branch account. I will write here to the debit side of branch stock account to goods sent to branch account. Of course, this item will be considered at invoice price because it is very clearly written over here. 
goods sent to branch and i have already told you if nothing is written invoice price or cost price we always presume the item is at invoice price so this is at invoice price 20000 worth of goods again i will take the loading and i will write towards the opposite side load load on goods sent to branch account load on goods sent to branch account that is 20000 into 1 by 5 that is equal to 4000 this is how i am going to write the amount of loading is it clear to you or not <coughs> now the next item in this case is loss in transit at invoice price and theft at invoice price both these losses are considered as abnormal loss please pay attention unless unless loss is suffixed or prefixed as normal it will always be considered as if the loss is abnormal loss what i said unless and until i will write that this loss is normal loss unless and until i will write this i will always presume that loss is what we call abnormal loss so loss in transit and theft at invoice price because it is not written normal so i will consider this loss as what we call abnormal loss both these losses are normal loss so that means out of 20,000 worth of goods which we sent to branch, some of the goods got lost. So I will write here first of all abnormal loss. I will write towards the credit side of branch stock account quite obviously because out of these goods some goods got lost. Abnormal loss one is loss in transit. One is lost in transit amount of loss in transit is actually 2500 and theft at invoice price is 1000 loss in transit is 2500 and theft theft is 1000 so total abnormal loss which you are having is equal to 3500 so 3500 worth of goods got lost regarding abnormal loss i told you the treatment first of all out of 20000 worth of goods which were invoiced by the head office to the branch 3500 worth of goods got lost automatically it means these are at invoice price i told you i will take the loading of the abnormal loss so load on abnormal loss now total abnormal loss is 3500 so 3500 into 1 by 5 so loading is equal to 700 so out of 3500 loading portion is 700 so that means remaining portion will be considered as abnormal loss at cost i told you abnormal loss at cost is reflected in the profit and loss account so i will write here abnormal loss at cost abnormal loss at cost 3500 is invoice price 700 is loading in it so remaining portion 2800 will be considered at cost so abnormal loss at cost will be debited to profit and loss account besides that in this question you have been given besides that in this particular question you have been given loss in weight now this is your normal loss 500 is your normal loss because word normal is also written over there. So pilferage which is normal loss, you will write here normal loss. Normal loss is 500 and I told you either you can simply ignore it or at all if you want to reflect it, first you will write the full amount over here. Then again full amount will be written to the debit side of the branch adjustment account. So that is the treatment of normal an abnormal loss normal loss is not broken into loaded part and cost part full amount of normal loss will be debited to branch adjustment account is it clear to you or not then we have got in this particular case sales amount of sales is actually 25500 generally if sales is not given as cash sales or credit sales general rule is that we consider them as credit sales 
if nothing is written as prefix or suffix cred credit or cash we always presume cash are on credit sale basis so logically on this count i should consider sales as credit sales but in this question actually neither there are opening daters nor there are closing daters so that's the reason reluctantly i will have to consider this particular sale as the entire amount in cash so sales but it is not going to make any effect because any type of sale will be written towards the credit side of the branch stock account i have already told you so sales you can write in bracket cash sales all these are cash sales because in this question opening and closing daters are not there amount of sales is 25500 you will write here 25500 Correct sales are written towards the credit side of branch stock account. I gave you the reasoning to know the position of this stock at the end of the year. After sales, we have got expenses. Whatever type of expenses you are going to incur will be debited to profit and loss account. So you are going to write expenses. Amount of expenses in this particular question is 8,000. So 8,000 worth of expenses you are going to debit here now after that we are having in this particular question as closing stock closing stock is given at invoice price that is at six thousand so i'm going to write here closing stock in the stock account balance carried down or simply closing stock i will write here closing stock amount of closing stock was six thousand so six thousand worth of closing stock you are going to write here and of course you are going to take the loading also so loading portion will be written towards the debit side of branch adjustment account i have already written loading so i will write here loading on closing stock loading on closing stock closing stock is 6000 into 1 by 5 that is equal to 1200 1200 remember one thing here it is written closing stock at branch at invoice price that means closing stock is at invoice price so in this question we did not need that need to use this particular rate because every item was at invoice price then we have been given claims received from insurance company for loss in transit just a moment ago in the last session i told you if you are going to get any insurance claim you must need to actually credit it to your profit and loss account so you are going to write over here insurance claim insurance claim amount of insurance claim is actually 2000 so amount of insurance claim you are going to write here 2000 So 2000 insurance claim you have written, correct? So I think everything we have now incorporated. So now we are in a position to tally this particular account, correct? Well, if I am going to tally this one, so it seems my credit side is bigger. 25,500 plus 3,500 plus 500 plus 6000 total of credit side is 35500 minus 25000 so balancing figure is 10500 your balancing figure is 10500 i told you logically a balancing figure appears towards the debit side of branch stock account rule is that first of all i should consider it as opening stock but opening stock is given second preference is good sent to branch it is also given then i should consider it as surplus these are the rules so i will consider it as surplus i also told you to earn surplus is the normal phenomena of the business so that is why surplus is straight away taken to the credit side of branch adjustment account and it is not broken into loaded part or cost part because it is considered something normal so entire amount of surplus that is full amount of surplus which we got in this particular case that is equal to 10,500 so 10,500 surplus I am going to write here 10,500 now I will tell you branch adjustment account and I told you branch adjustment account because it 
incorporates the margins so we are going to get gross profit out of it 10500 plus 1 and 4 5000 i will separate 700 i will separate 1200 then 500 so 13100 is my gross profit so in this method we get gross profit decides net profit so this is my gross profit so we have been able to find out gross profit also and finally this gross profit will be taken to the credit side of branch profit and loss account 13100 and now you will compute your net profit 13100 plus 2000 minus 2800 minus 8000 and 4300 is your net profit so this is how you are going to do this particular question this is your net profit is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? This is how you have to do this particular question. I hope you are able to understand this one. And similar to this is 2.4. But here, in this particular question, we will use the rates of cost also. Correct? So I will rub it out now. So, I can use these formats again. This is branch profit or loss account, branch adjustment account. And then, I will rub it. Two point four we are talking about, correct? I will rub this one also. Well, then, in this question, this is now two point four. Question number 2.4. Similar to question number 2.3, even in this particular question, 2.4, you can see it is written that fit and fine traders are sending goods to Rudrapur branch at cost plus 25%. My first target should be to compute the rate of profit. I will compute the rate of profit in the same manner as I did with respect to 2.3. Rate of profit is given on cost. I will consider cost as 100. I will consider margin as 25. Invoice price will be 125. Then I will compute the rate of loading on invoice price that will be 1 by 5 and I will also compute the rate of loading on cost that will be equal to 1 by 4. Correct? Now in this question, your first item happens to be opening stock at cost to branch. Opening stock at cost to branch is written 20,000. Now you let me know whether this item is at invoice price or at cost price. At cost to branch, it is written. I told you, still this item will be considered at invoice price. Because invoice price itself is the cost to the branch. Because branch is receiving the goods at invoice price, so branch will think that this is the cost price of the goods. So, that is why opening stock will be considered at invoice price. Remember one thing, this is very, very important. So, opening stock, I will write here 20,000. 20,000. And I will write the loading towards the credit side of the branch adjustment account. I will write here 20,000 into 1 by, because rate of loading on invoice price I will need. Because this item will be considered at invoice price even though it is written at cost to branch. Had it been written at cost to head office, then it would have been treated at cost. If what would have been the treatment in that case, I would, have, I would be letting you know, but after some time. 4,000. Then in this question, next item given to you is goods sent to branch at invoice price. So this time, this item is very clearly mentioned. Goods sent to branch, 1 lakh. So you will write to goods sent to branch towards the debit side of branch stock account. You will write here 1 lakh. And of course, you will write the loading portion towards the credit side of branch adjustment account. So 1 lakh is your goods sent to branch and loading 
1 by 5, so 20,000 will be your loading amount. Loading amount will be 20,000, correct? Now in this question, again it is given loss in transit 10,000. No doubt loss in transit is will be considered as abnormal loss. Now pay attention here. And there is a controversy regarding that. Because you have been given pilferage at 4,000. If I am going to ask you whether pilferage is a normal loss or abnormal loss. 99.99% most of you will let me know that pilferage without any doubt is normal loss. You are absolutely right and I, I agree up to an extent in this particular regard. 99% pilferage, seepage, leakage, evaporation, because these are considered as natural phenomena, so th these should be considered as normal loss. However, branch accounting, higher purchase accounting, these are considered as special cases of accounting. Sometimes when you scan your slavers, you find that it is written special transactions, branch account, higher purchase account, sell balancing ledgers, etc. So why it is written in special transaction? Because sometimes we deviate from the normally established rules of the accounting. So in case of branch, I have already told you, unless very clearly it is mentioned normal, you will consider every loss as abnormal. So even though it is given at pil pilferage and word normal is not mentioned, so that is why I will consider both these two items as item of abnormal loss. Correct? So abnormal loss, 10,000 and 4,000. Loss in transit is 10,000. You will write here 10,000. You will write towards the credit side of the branch stock account. And then besides what we call loss in transit, in this question you have pilferage. So you will write pilferage. Pilferage means sort of leakage. 4,000. Because word normal is not written, so I am considering it as abnormal loss. Because in branch account you must consider every loss as abnormal loss unless it is specifically mentioned normal so that is why it is treated as abnormal loss so 14,000 worth of goods have been lost so I will take the loading of abnormal loss 14,000 into 1 by 5 14,000 into 1 by 5 will be equal to how much 14,000 divided by 5 is equal to 2,800 so I will write here abnormal loss as 2,800. This is the loading part. But we also know that abnormal loss is written to the debit side of branch P&L account at cost price. 14,000 is your invoice price and we just computed 2,800, the loading portion. So abnormal loss at cost will be equal to 11,200. So I will write here 11,200. 11,200. This is the full treatment of abnormal loss. After the after these two items, again we are having sales. And again in this question, opening and closing data are not given. So these amount of sales which is given to you as 1,22 will be considered as cash sales. So cash sales or credit sales will be written to the credit side of what we call branch, branch stock account. No further treatment. And then you have in this case closing stock at branch. Again, it is written at cost to branch. So again, it is at invoice price. At cost to branch means it is still at invoice price. So again, in this question, we need not require what we call to use uh, the rate of cost. 24,000. Closing stock at branch at cost is 24,000. So closing stock we will write here in the branch stock account 24,000. And then I will take the loading 24,000 into 1 by 5. So loading will be equal to how much? 24,000 divided by 5 will be equal to 4,800. This is your loading portion. In this question, there is no normal loss. Normal loss is not there. Then we have got expenses 22,000. So expenses 22,000 you are going to write here. 22,000. And then recovery of insurance claim is 6,000. You are going to write 6,000. So similar to the last question, in this question, I am going to first of all compute the amount of surplus because our credit side is bigger. 
balancing figure is coming towards the debit side logically first preference should be given to opening stock but opening stock is already given in the question opening stock is given goods sent to branch is given so now whatever balancing figure is there uh, that will be 40,000 I think yes it is 40,000 so 40,000 is your balancing figure and 40,000 will be written towards the credit side of the branch adjustment account correct it will be written to the credit side of branch adjustment account now you can find out your gross profit according to your solution it is 56,400 so I am not wasting time unnecessarily to compute it you can do so by yourself 56,400 will be taken to the credit side of profit and loss account and then you will find the net profit according to them net profit is 29,200 now let me explain one important point in this particular question suppose suppose in this question let me first rub it out suppose in this question suppose in this question if it would have been written opening stock at branch at opening branch uh, opening stock at cost suppose if it would have been written opening stock instead of writing at branch suppose if it would have been written opening stock at head office opening stock at head office at cost to head office suppose if it would have been written in this manner or if it would have been written simply opening stock at cost or it would have been written opening stock at cost to head office so in that case i would have had presumed that this item opening stock is at cost then how i would have had treated in that particular case if an item with respect to goods below is at cost if an item below is at cost in that case when you will write the items in your branch stock account because we know that branch stock account is prepared at invoice price at invoice price but if the item is at cost that means i will have to convert it into what we call cost price so how i would have had converted that item just give me one minute just to make you understand correct suppose if this item would have been at cost so how i would have had treated this item i would have written opening stock at cost twenty thousand and now i would have had applied to it rate of profit on cost rate of profit on cost what does it mean when i say rate of profit on cost is four what does it mean it means if your cost price is four the profit element is one and that is why invoice price is five if your cost is four you're adding one to it and your invoice price is coming to five that is what we mean by one by four now if cost price is four in profit margin is one and suppose if cost price of opening stock is twenty thousand suppose if cost price is twenty thousand profit is one if cost price is 20,000 what will be the profit that is 20,000 into 1 by 4 that is equal to 5,000 that means if cost is 20 you are putting up a profit margin of 5,000 and you are sending it at 25,000 that is the reason if this item would have been given in the question at cost I would have had written here 20,000 and then I would have used the rate of profit on cost. So one fourth of cost is 5,000. And now this item is at invoice price. Now this item will become at invoice price. Because branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price. So I will have to convert this item which is at cost price to invoice price. Now this is invoice price. Is it clear to you? And I will take the loading of this item. Because now it is 25,000. So I would have taken the loading in this manner. I would have taken the loading in this manner. 25,000 that is invoice price. Now it is invoice price 25,000. And I would have used the rate of loading on invoice price. Because now this item has been converted into invoice price. So your 5,000 would be or would have been the loading amount. So 
if an item is given at cost, so such type of what we call caution we need to exercise. Is it clear to you or not? So if an item below is at cost, then we need to be very, very careful regarding such items. Is it clear to you or not? So this is all about your 2.4. And now we move over to 2.5. Yes, in this question, surely I will need the rate of profit on cost. In this question, I will need rate of profit on cost also. See, cost plus 25% rate is given to you. If I am going to compute the rate, it will be one-fourth on cost and it will be one-fifth on invoice price. Correct? Similar to the earlier question. But in this question, very first item is given opening stock at branch, but at cost to head office. At cost to head office, this time it is at cost. This time it is at cost. Goods sent to branch at invoice price, of course, of course it is at invoice price. Loss in transit and pilferage are there. You will consider both these items at abnormal loss because these abnormal loss must have taken out of these goods. So this abnormal loss is at invoice price. Sales 12 lakh 19,000, you will consider them at what we call cash. <coughs> Expenses 60,000 and closing stock at branch at cost to head office. Again, it is written, you will consider them at cost. Because this time rates are given at cost, sorry, some of the items are given at cost, so you will need to apply the rate of profit on cost. How you are going to apply them, <coughs> that I will let, let you know. See here. I will prepare branch stock account. Okay, should I use the same format? Can I use, if you allow me, because I will have to otherwise prepare. Okay, I will prepare it here itself. Branch stock account. Branch stock account. This is your 2.5. Branch stock account, correct? And in order to prepare the branch stock account, I think this much is enough. Then I will prepare your branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account. So now we are going to prepare the branch adjustment account in this particular case, correct? And uh, branch adjustment account is prepared to know the gross profit, of course, and it incorporates only the loading part. By now, you are very well aware of it. Correct? Branch adjustment account. This is the problem. Just wait. What happens? Framing of account is the only problem. See here. Sometimes what happens actually in these gadgets, your sweating actually takes place and that gives us a bit of problem. This is your branch profit and loss account, correct?
very difficult even to stress the lines. So anyway, 2.5 is the question. And first item opening a stock at branch at cost to branch is given. This very first question is very important. Very first item is very important. Opening a stock at branch at cost to head office. I told you if it is given at cost to head office, it means it is at cost, correct? So opening a stock, first of all, I'm going to write here, opening a stock. Because this item is at cost, opening stock, at cost, at cost it is actually 64,000. So I will have to apply the rate, one-fourth rate of loading on cost. 64,000 is the cost. So one-fourth I will apply to it, <coughs> 64,000 divided by one-fourth that is equal to 16,000. And in the outer column, I am going to write 80,000. So now this item, which is at cost is equal to 64,000. Its invoice price is 80,000. On the opposite side, that means towards the branch adjustment account, I will write load on opening stock. Now, because opening stock has been converted into invoice price, so I am going to write here 80,000. This is invoice price and now I will use the rate 1 by 5. That is equal to 16,000. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you have to move in this particular question. Next is goods sent to branch. You will write here goods sent to branch account. That is equal to 12 lakh. Of course it is at invoice price 12 lakh. And then you will write here load on goods sent to branch account that is equal to 12 lakh into 1 by 5 because this item is at invoice price and you will need to apply the rate of loading on invoice price that is equal to 2 lakh 40,000 then we have in this particular case loss in transit and what we call pill phrase. Both these items will be considered as abnormal loss 2.5. So, towards the credit side, I will write abnormal loss. Abnormal loss in transit. In transit is equal to 15,000. And pill phrase, it's 6,000. Bill for age is 6,000. So you will write here 21,000. Now regarding abnormal loss, you have to exercise a bit of caution because abnormal loss need to be split into loaded part and cost part. So towards the debit side of the branch adjustment account, first of all, you will write here load on abnormal loss that is 21,000 into 1 by 5. 21,000 into 1 by 5 will be equal to 4,200. This is the loaded part. 4,200. Correct? This is the loaded part. Then you will move to the branch profit and loss account. And you will write here abnormal loss at cost. Abnormal loss at cost and abnormal loss was 21,000 at invoice price and we computed the loading. The loading was 4,200. So I will subtract 4,200 out of it to get what we call abnormal loss at cost price. 16,800 abnormal loss at cost price. Correct? This is your profit and loss account. Then we have in this case amount of sales which is equal to 12 lakh 19,000. So many times I have already told you if nothing is written, whether it is cash sales or credit sales, generally it is considered as credit sales, but because opening to closing data are not given, so I will consider it as cash sales only. However, we have to write only sales here. 
12 lakh 19,000, correct? And then we have been given expenses. Expenses are 60,000 worth. So I will write here expenses in the PL account 60,000. Expenses are 60,000. And besides expenses, we have been given in this particular case closing stock, and again it is at cost price, correct? So first I am going to write here closing stock. Now closing stock at cost price is given to you. So first you write closing stock at cost. Amount given to you is 32,000. So you will write here 32,000. Then add to it one fourth. In order to convert cost into invoice price, we shall need what we call rate of loading on cost. So one fourth will be equal to 8,000. I will add 8,000 to it. After adding 8,000, I will get 40,000. So closing stock at invoice price will be considered at 40,000. And I am going to take the loading part, loading on closing stock is equal to 40,000 into 1 by 5. That is equal to 8,000. Correct? This is how I am going to do this one. And again, there is recovery from insurance company that should not pose you any problem. You will simply write here, insurance claim. Amount is 10,000. And now, all you have to do is to tally this account. Interestingly, in this particular question, branch stock account is automatically getting tallied. 12 lakh 80, 12 lakh 80 is the total. Sometime it may happen. So you need not require to stretch your mind unnecessarily. Yes, it is. Then you will tally your what we call branch stock account, branch adjustment account, sorry. And you will compute your gross profit, which will be equal to 2 lakh 43,800. Or should be equal to 2,43,800 because I haven't computed honestly speaking. And gross profit, then you are going to transfer to the credit side 2,43,800. And then finally, you are going to compute your net profit, and your net profit should be equal to 1,77,000, and it would be equal to 1,77,000. This is how you will have to do this question. So after having done this question, you should be in a position to do 2.6. Because in the 2.6, again, you are great. See here, so many questions have struck, so many questions of such nature have, have been asked in the examination. So again here, cost plus 25%, your rate of loading on cost will be equal to 1 by 4 and rate of loading on invoice price will be equal to 1 by 5. Correct? <clears throat> Opening stock at branch at cost to branch is given. That means this item is at invoice price because it is written at cost to branch. Had it been written at cost to head office, I would have considered it at cost price. However, in this case, it is at invoice price. Goods sent to branch is at invoice price. So loss is there. So it is your abnormal loss and normal loss is also given and rest of the things you can manage. Even this item is at invoice price. So in this question, you will not need to use rate of profit on cost. Even 2.7 is of similar fashion. See here, again rate is cost plus 25%, 1 by 4 and 1 by 5. Again it is at invoice price. Again it is at invoice price. These are your abnormal losses. And here closing stock, this is at cost price because it is written at cost to head office. So when you are going to write your closing stock, you will write in this manner, closing stock at cost 3 lakh. You will write here closing stock at cost 3 lakh. And you will convert it into invoice price by adding rate of profit on cost. That is 1 4, 75,000. So your closing stock at invoice price will be equal to 3,75,000. 
First, you will write 375,000 to the credit side of branch stock account. Then you will take the loading. When you will take the loading, then you will apply the rate one by five because now it is at invoice price. Correct. So in this question, closing stock will need bit of attention. So you need to do at least till up to what we call 2.8, correct? I hope that you can easily manage this question. And then after 2.7, in the next session, we'll start with 2.8. It's a very interesting question, 2.8, but we'll talk about that in the upcoming session. Till then, it's time to say good night and goodbye both.